Hey, so um, at the store, it isn't always about like buying and selling. I trade. I do that. I've always traded because and, and I think a lot of collectors, I just touch my face. Every single video I start off, I touch my face. I've got to do something about it. Um, but yeah, the one of the big things that I've always done um, and if you're a longtime collector of anything, you've probably done this as well as trading. Um, and especially if it's for stuff that you're not that particularly interested in, but the person has stuff that you really are interested in. Um, and the case in point is this week, uh, I had an advertising sign that, you know, uh, I think I picked it up for like 30 bucks, like 10, 15 years ago. Um, it was a soda sign. A particularly good condition not you know the best um, subject matter graphically um, you know and and I had two hundred dollars on it expecting eventually to get beat up um, and probably let it go for around 150 but I only had 30 bucks into it so you know and it had sat around for a while uh, but this gentleman had admired it for quite a while um, clearly didn't want to pay the two hundred dollars and instead brought in a stack of records and asked if I would be willing to think about doing a trade um, for the stack of records for the uh, sign. And uh, I went through them and there's some pretty decent records in there. Um, I mean, there's some filler as well, but generally just uh, overall pretty good stuff. So yeah, we did the deal. He's super happy, got rid of some records out of his collection that he wasn't too attached to, um, and then ended up, uh, you know, I got a stack of records for a sign that, you know, it sat around for a little bit, and I only had $30 in, so technically this stack of records probably only cost me really $30 in the end. So um, yeah, sometimes it's just a really good way of doing things uh, between collectors, especially, like I said, if it's stuff that neither of you are super attached to yourselves that you want to trade away and your the other stuff that the person has is stuff they, <laughs> excuse me, oh, the bug. Um, yeah, it can work out really well. So uh, I'll show you the stack of records that I got and uh, see what you think. Okay, so here is what we have. Um, this pile came into the store today uh, on a trade for, um, uh, I had something in the store, it was a collectible uh, piece that somebody wanted and it was worth, you know, probably, I mean, I only paid 30 bucks for the damn thing, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I probably retail, I could have expected you know, around 150 for it. I think I had it up at uh, 200. Um, and the gentleman uh, who I bought records off for, he's just come in and sold me straight, said, you know, would you be interested in trading um, these for that? And so I had a look and I'll show you guys. I think I, you know, got a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent deal out of it. Um, and then this here stuff is, um, stuff that I forgot about and I just found the box again um, because I got a I, as some of you may have seen in my past videos my town dump has like a, a reuse center so stuff that you think is probably too good to go be thrown away can be put in this uh, it's essentially like a giant open sea crate um, and then people can come and take it for free save stuff from going to the landfill um, it's a great idea um, but about a year ago I didn't even know that existed and then I was driving by to drop stuff off at the dump and came up with um what I thought I saw was a box of records in there and turns out there was three boxes of records in there you can go back and maybe I'll put the link to that video on here um you can go back and look at it it was pretty interesting stuff and same thing every I check usually about once a week and uh this week I got some uh, there were two boxes in there and that's what's in there we'll show you that but we'll start with um, this stuff because I'm sure this is what everybody is here and wanting to see. Uh, so, yeah, tougher Aussie to get uh, the ultimate sin. Um, and this one is in really, really great uh, condition overall. I think when did this record come out? Like, I want to say like 
86. Is that what's on there? Yeah, okay, so I was right, 86. Jake E. Lee's on guitar at that point. Um, really great condition. That's the nice thing about uh, these records that I get off this gentleman. He is always, sorry about the terrible camera work, can't decide if I want to be up or down on this. Um, they're re always in really good condition, so, um, you know, half of them don't even look like they've been played. Uh, so, and most of these are from, like, the mid-80s to the late-80s uh, era of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Cinderella, Night Songs. Um, that, I think, was 86, too. So, this is uh, U2's War. And it's not the usual ones. I'm in Ontario, Canada, so these uh, pressings are almost all going to be Canadian. Uh, but this is the Columbia House pressing. I believe it's Columbia House. It's the Record Club. Yeah, Columbia House Record Club pressing which came as a gatefold and uh, has a like a black band around the actual label itself. I'm not even going to attempt to try to pull that out with one hand. Um, but it makes it, a, it's probably, well, it's worth more than the first pressing. Um, it's kind of a tough one. I've only ever had this once before, so that was kind of nice. Uh, White Snake, again, fantastic condition, both the cover and the inners. Uh, the Scorpion's Animal Magnetism, and yeah that was 1980 right on there and here we have roger waters um this is radio chaos this is the canadian first pressing because it doesn't have the um the little thing on there saying roger waters radio chaos um a little bit dusty but that's it that'll wipe down um it is in really great shape again and the records are too like they are just perfect Iron Eagle soundtrack, a soundtrack to a movie I have never heard of. <laughs> it's clearly some kind of um, Top Gun sort of like attempt to, you know, copy the Top Gun thing, which was out at the time. And I'll bet this was like 1984 or 85. Um, let's see if I can find it on there. 1986, so a little a little while after that. But, you know, not bad. He had Queen, Dio, um, and George Clinton, which is kind of interesting. In a strange sort of setup for having George on there. Uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, soundtrack to nine and a half weeks. I get live soundtrack collectors who come into the store uh, about once a month and usually buy uh, a bunch of the more obscure stuff. Um, so these will probably sell pretty quick. Uh, here's another one, soundtrack to uh, the motion picture for 2010. Tommy Conwell. Uh, this is probably, this and the next one, the, uh, after this are probably the worst condition, but even still, they're still totally playable. A um, few surface scuffs, but nothing crazy on that. And the covers, you know, seen better days. Uh, and this is the other one, the Kiss. Same kind of thing. It sadly doesn't have the booklet in there. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, playable and passable. Uh, Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. Stevie Nicks's Rock a Little. Soundtrack to Footloose. Uh, ELP. Georgia Satellites. And th this stuff, other than those first ones, is just more bread and butter for the store type thing. Uh, Hank Williams Jr. Live. Luba, Canadian artist. Patti Smith. 38 special and again these are things that like it was i had to take the whole group or nothing in the trade um and so i just took the whole group but these are not you know big money records by any stretch of it uh that's kind of cool because rye cooter did the soundtrack to that um this is amazing because of that man giorgio moroder uh everything giorgio touched well most stuff that giorgio moroder uh did was amazing he he was just a pioneer in um using analog synths and just um incredible stuff and this is no different is this this is the one with bowie the bowie track on there cat people yeah it is yeah that's it cat people putting out the fire um such a great track um uh, hendrix essentials volume two sadly it doesn't come with the gloria seven inch um because there was an extra seven inch uh, that's not in here and then uh the essentials volume one which was a double set again in nice shape it's pretty cool too in itself it's a uk import 12 inch picture disc single of the heaven track 
for warrant. And then there's the bag. It comes with uh, B-sides of cold sweat and in the sticks. Is that right? Yeah. So, and I think this is like 89. So right on the edge of like when they were about to start, although this is UK, but in North America, we're uh, starting to cut down on vinyl production and probably within a year completely done. Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, again, pretty nice copy. Really good shape. Uh, the Queen's Night of the Opera. I find, I come across this all the time and it is always destroyed. This one, again, really well kept. Cover has a few little spots, but overall nice. Triumph Rock and Roll Machine. David Wilcox, Out of the Woods. Canadian artist. Um, Edgar Winters. Eddie and the Cruiser soundtrack. Fabulous Thunderbirds. These will all lined up probably, you know. In the cheap thing, Red Rider, Robert Palmer, Danuge, uh, ZZ Top's Afterburner, Dwight Yoakam, Guitars Cadillacs, and uh, Hillbilly Deluxe. So yeah, that's that's what I came in, and essentially. Um, I was expecting to get around 150. I had a price to 200. Uh, for the piece the gentleman wanted and uh, so I just said you know what that's fine like 41 records um, for essentially what I, I think I paid like 30 bucks for the piece years and years ago um, as an advertising piece um, and uh, so yeah I'm super happy with that so there's 41 records there uh, even if I calculated it like uh, 150 bucks um, I, you know, it's like 350 a record, I think, or something. That, and again, that's in Canadian money. So for my American friends right now, it'd be like pretty close to like 275 a record, which I know is like crazy, crazy low price, but that's the trade that, you know, he was okay with. Um, and, uh, I'm more than okay with it. So, uh, we'll move on over to here real quick to go through these. These are the ones they found at the dump and, and some of them, there were two boxes. One box wasn't in the best of shape and one box was in pretty good shape. Um, so this is the box that was in okay shape. Um, nothing really amazing in here. It's like a lot of like, you know, middle of the road stuff, um, like missing persons and, you know, later cheap trick records. Small talk, D Mob, <laughs> Street Heart. I actually have the concert shirt for this out in the store. I should show that at some point. That's hilarious because it's Drugstore Dancer and I have that. Uh, the Ragland baseball style uh, concert shirt from that tour. It's crazy. The Communards, uh, Barquets. The Knack. A lot of these are going to end up in the cheap end. Nantucket. Kid Creole. Huey <laughs> Lewis in the news. Oh, man. David Lind uh, Lindley and El Rayo X. That's a great K guitar. Look at that thing. Actually, look at all those Rezos. Those are fantastic. The Bottles. Never heard of them. Uh, Neil Diamond. Ricky Skaggs. Dead or Alive. Boys Don't Cry and I Want to Be a Cowboy. Divine. Oh, that's awesome. I actually had somebody asking me for Divine the other day and how many. Haywire. They were a Canadian band. Arrow. The Hot Mixer Remix and the B-side of Hot, Hot, Hot. Um, Gino Vanelli. Black Cars. Dance Mix. <laughs> uh, Thompson Twins. Alexi Sale. Didn't You Kill My Brother? Oh, that's hilarious. Mick Jagger. She's the boss. Oh, Mix Solo Record. I, I'm not going to tell, I, I got a secondhand story about somebody who actually worked um, for, oh, what was Mick's label at the time? Columbia, in New York City. And um, when Mick released this record, it didn't sell very well. And um, it was... He, he basically came in and was like, you know, okay, what are the numbers? What are the numbers? And, um, it was not very good. It was like in the thousands and they were like, well, it's, you know, like one to two Mick, you know, and he was like, oh, well, you know, one to 200,000, not, not, 
not the best really we can do better but you know what we got to keep positive about it and then hopped out of the room and apparently nobody had the stones to go and tell him that, like it was only a couple of thousand on the first day sales so whether it's true or not i don't know it might be telling tales out of school it is based from somebody that i did know who did work there and uh, so maybe true or not i know that this didn't sell very well you know considering it's a stones sort of side project um flyer no clue but that's a great shot of the concord i love that tanya tucker another tanya tucker okay so that was one of the boxes uh that i took and again free stuff so um no you know you can't leave records behind at least i can't that's not sort of within my wheelhouse to do these ones um came from uh, a second box now i only picked some of them out because most of the box was in really rough shape and these uh sadly a lot of them had mold this one has a little bit of mold in the outside uh, side of the shrink not in the record side itself um so i grabbed it because it's such a great record um couldn't really leave it behind and the record itself looks fantastic here's another one from that box um it's freddie hubbard uh it's a pretty great album actually um and you can see who's on there with it so yeah pretty pretty cool record to find in there jack scott this one's got some hazing on there again but it's on the outside and it's just dusted on top there so that should wipe off pretty easily um if it doesn't i'll just toss it but um it's jack scott i remember hank williams um Again, Jack was a Canadian artist. Um, you can see there's got something. This one's in really nice shape, actually. It's Tamita, uh, sort of the electronic composer. Um, Snowflakes are dancing. I bought, I grabbed this one just because I love the cover. Um, it's Confessions of Love, Passions and Prose by Mary Lee Fair. I don't know anything about it. Um, there's harp and trumpet. So, I mean, that's kind of interesting. And Songs of the Rubiat and Poetry of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of interested in hearing what, uh, what that sounds like. So those were the four that I got from that. This, um, I didn't even know existed. I, I love pretty much anything came out on Stax. I love that cover. I wish I could have seen the original Stax sign back in the day like that all lit up. It would have been something something pretty special um but it's a, a compilation i can't remember what year it came out but you can see what's on there it's one of the best i have a lot of these the individual albums that these came out of but i love early Stax comps it's in phenomenal condition um it's got the drill out there um and but it is in incredible condition inside and out and i'm going to show you something because it still does happen on occasion that came you get it there from the value village which for my american friends is uh the parent company is savers in the u.s um, but here in canada it's value village so yeah it's five bucks i had a 20 percent off coupon i used it um and totally happy with that usually this kind of stuff doesn't make it through not in this condition and uh i happened to be there and the only reason i got this uh and one other record which i didn't even bother to bring through because it wasn't particularly special but the only reason i got this was because um they were putting the records out as i happened to be sitting there it's only happened to me one other time um and so i grabbed this there were a couple of other soul tracks but they weren't like anything particularly special and they had like elevated prices like eight and nine and ten dollars each on them which you know for my own personal collection that's fine but for if i'm looking to resell not really any meat left on the bone on any of those in fact probably more than i would get for them in my store so this one goes straight into my collection uh super happy with that and uh there's a couple in you know that other first lot that i got in there and then yeah i want to check out this confessions of love the more that i look at it the more interesting it gets and when i picked it up i didn't notice it was harp which i'm assuming is like like full-blown harp and trumpet i i don't know i hope that turns out to be really cool you never know but again free at a dump so 
well, I'm technically rescuing it, just like I rescued all the rest of these. I'm going into the landfill needlessly. And if I, they'll probably sit for a while and eventually we'll probably end up in my like super cheap bin, um, but better there than uh, in the ground. And then, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, pretty good little pickup there. You can hear my old man knees cracking in the background. But uh, yeah, that's it. Um, so hope you guys are uh, able to find some cool stuff. And uh, yeah. Bye.